name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, in yesterday's gospel, we saw Jesus was crying for the temple because he saw so many things happening other than the worship of the Lord and the piety in the temple. And therefore, he prophesied about the destruction of the temple. And as he entered the temple today, he wants to clean or cleanse the temple because instead of worship, the business is being practiced in the temple. And therefore, God, rather Jesus God, wants to fulfill the prophecy of the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. And very often we too, maybe keeping so many things in our hearts, as St. Paul says, your heart is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Instead of keeping God in our hearts and center of our lives, we often keep so many worldly things and worldly relationships and worldly practices in our hearts and there is no place for God. And therefore, let's call to mind all those moments where we forgot and neglected God and gave importance to the world and worldly people and asked God's pardon and mercy. And in order to offer this Mass in a worthy manner, let us call to mind all our sins and failures, shortcomings, and ask God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, God and to, to my, brothers my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my, and in my words, in what, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I took the book and swallowed it. A reading from the book of the Revelation, chapter 10, verses 8 to 11. Book of Revelation, chapter 10, verses 8 to 11. I, John, heard the voice I had heard from heaven speaking to me again. Go, it said, and take that open scroll out of the hand of the angel standing on sea and land. I went to the angel and asked him to give me the small scroll. And he said, take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will taste as sweet as honey. So I took it out of the angel's hand and swallowed it. 
It was as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you are to prophesy again, this time about many different nations and countries and languages and emperors. The word of the Lord. Our A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verse 45 to 48. Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verse 45 to 48. Jesus went into the temple and began driving out those who were selling. According to scripture, he said, My house will be a house of prayer, 
but you have turned it into a robber's den. He taught in the temple every day. The chief priests and the scribes, with the support of the leading citizens, tried to do away with him, but they did not see how they could carry this out because the people as a whole hung on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, In today's Gospel, Jesus is cleaning, rather, bringing back the worship that is lost in the temple. When we see the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, the prophet Malachi tells about the messianic period where he enters the temple and purifies the temple where so many other than the worship is taking place. And in order to mark that messianic period, Jesus enters the temple and he fulfills the prophecy prophesied by Prophet Malachi. And secondly, we find the place of worship for the people of Israel is Jerusalem. And it is very evident from the Old Testament references. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 17, says, Holy city, the throne of the Lord is Jerusalem. And again, the first book of Kings, chapter 11, verse 13. Second book of Kings, chapter 21, 4, and chapter 23, verse 27. Stresses on the place which God chose for his name, to dwell there. And it says that it is the place where God resides. And the psalmist beautifully says, Psalm 2nd verse 6, he says, The holy mountain upon which God has set his king. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ. In the life of the people of Israel, Jerusalem temple played a vital role and center of their worship of Yahweh. And when we look back into the history of Israel, there were so many places where they were worshiping God Yahweh. But it is after David conquering all the kingdoms and brought under his rule, he made Jerusalem as the center of worship. And from time and so, people started to come into Jerusalem and even even though the temple was destroyed once after King David and Solomon, but still they could rebuild with the help of Josiah and regain the worship in Jerusalem. And the people of Israel had a practice among themselves that wherever they stay, in whichever place or the country or the kingdom they stay, they're supposed to come back and celebrate the Passover. 
and as it is become the custom of the people of Israel, the temple got so much importance. And by seeing this, the importance, people started to misuse the people who come far away. So much so, when they enter into the temple, they are supposed to offer the local currency as an offering. If they want to offer an ox, if they want to offer dough, if they want to offer lamb, if they want to put coins into the offering box, whatever it may be, they are supposed to put the local currency. And that is the reason we find that the business in the temple, the people who are in diaspora, who are living in other places, when they come to the Jerusalem temple, they had different currencies and therefore they need to exchange in the temple premises and thereby people started to misuse and misguide and for their own whims and fancies they were spoiling the people who come for the worship and at that time Jesus enters the temple and he cleanses not only that he quotes from two references my house is a house of prayer as we read in the book of Isaiah and again he says don't make this church or rather temple as a den of robbers and we read from the book of Jeremiah yes my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ you or me or anybody, we need to come to the church or the temple to worship the Lord, not with our own ideas of exploiting the people. And if you do that, then we are not far from those of the Pharisees or the Sadducees who were doing business and who had changed by Jesus from the temple and again we see in the modern times in Paul beautifully says are you not the temple of the Holy Spirit and therefore physically every temple is a place a place of common worship and is not for any other activities and when I come and enter, I should feel the presence of the Lord. And if I have that attitude within myself, then we are blessed abundantly. And if we don't have that attitude within ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, as we read in the first reading, the word of God becomes bitter in our stomach. Of course, when we read it, it's so nice, so sweet like honey, but when it comes into practice in our lives, the word of God that we hear and when we take it into our hearts, it will be bitter in our stomach. It is very difficult to digest because the word of God purifies like Jesus Christ. And the gospel says that Jesus himself is the gospel. Jesus himself is the good news. And if we want to take Jesus into our hearts, that means we need to listen and practice his words that is the Bible and when we practice then a heart which is a temple the common worship place for all of us is a place of worship becomes 
holy and holy and thereby the purpose of for which god has intended will be fulfilled in us and among us amen my dear brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to god the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church let us pray grant o lord we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord in him you have been pleased to renew all things giving us all a share in his fullness but though he was in the form of god he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation therefore he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. Jesus took bread and given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Thuma Bala our Archbishop, and all the clergy. In a very special way, we place before you all the intentions that are offered during this Eucharistic celebration. Accept them, Lord, and grant them, and as you bless them, increase their faith. We also, Lord, pray for Nithya, who is celebrating her birthday. Bless and guide and grant all the necessary graces that you need. Remember your servants, Boyapati Agareddy, Stanley, Rajan Jude, Mark Matthew, and his grandparents, D. Ryan, Winston Reid, John Sinvas Rao, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also may be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the spouse of Mary, with the blessed apostles, Saint Antony of Padua, Saint Eugene de Masna, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
in the Holy and the Dawn of the Spirit, all glory and honors is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the lamp of God, behold him who take away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. Hymn number 342-342. Oh, 
is my happiness to place my hope in God the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring you, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and your families and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and serve the Lord. The Mass is ended. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Sweet heart of Jesus, from of love and mercy Today we come Thy blessings to implore O oh, touch our hearts So cold and so ungrateful And make them Lord Thine own Make 
us pure and gentle and teach us how to do thy blessed will.